In this tutorial, we are going to learn useState hook in depth. So useState is one of the most used hook in React. Before we dive into useState hook, let's understand first what is hooks. If you already know, you can skip this part and directly jump on useState hook. So what is hooks? Hooks are the functions to use some React features in functional components. In other words, we can say that hooks are functions that make functional components work like class component. I know this sounds complicated, but it's not. Let's understand with one story. Before React launched hooks, there is only one way to use state and lifecycle methods by using the class components. Now developers had some problems with class components. So React takes some time to develop special functions that we can use in functional components and that special functions are called hooks. So I think now you understand what is React hooks, which are functions that make functional components work like class components. Let's start with our first hook, which is useState hook. What is useState hook? useState hook is a function to add state in functional component. Now you might ask, what is state? So state is nothing but just values or variables of your component. In other words, all variables in your component are called as state of that component. So whenever you want to create a variable, then you have to use useState hook, simple as that. Let's understand with the example. Here I have new react application and I deleted all unnecessary files from this. So first let me create a functional component by using rafce. This is the emit for creating the functional components, but you need to install this ES7 React extension first. I love this extension, it boosts my productivity in React. Now here I am going to create one simple counter, which displays a counter value and one button called increase. And when we click on this button, counter value will increase by one. Now this is where I want to display the value of the counter. So we need state. And this is where we use useState hooks. So to use any hook, first we need to import that hook from React library. So write here useState. Okay, here we are going to call useState function and we give our counter initial value like zero. Now this function is going to return an array. So let's console it. See, this array has two elements. The first element is our original value which is 0 and the second element is one function. So let's store this first element in the counter variable and display it here by using curly brackets. Save the changes and take a look. We get our counter. Now the second element of this array returns a function. And by using this function, we can update our state values. So let's store this element in variable called state counter. Now whatever value we pass in this function will be the value of this counter variable. Let me show you that. Here we want to increase the counter by 1 when we click on this button. So add function in on click increase counter. Now we need to define this function. And inside this function we write set counter original value which is counter plus 1. Save it and take a look. See it works. And when we refresh the page, it again start with 0, which we pass in that function of use state. Now here our code looks little bit ugly. So we always use the shortcut for these three lines, which is called array destructuring. So here at the place of array, add square brackets and inside that write the first variable name, which is counter and then write function name which is the set counter. Now we don't need these two lines, it works the same as before. And our code looks clean. And you can use multiple use state hooks in a single component. Now let's see how we can use the use state to get value from the input. So let's create one input with type text. Here we need to handle the on change event and we pass the expression and arrow function 
and we use e.target.value to update state variable. So type use state here and here we can give our variable initial value in this case empty string. Now whenever the value of this input field changes we call set name function and pass e.target.value. So we call set name and pass this value. Now let's change our label to variable name has clicked variable counter times. Save the changes and take a look. Here we have text box and when we write name code it's immediately updates here and also counter updates on click. Now let's see how to use useState hook when we have object as a state variable. So here we create two state variable which are counter and name. Now we can do same with one state variable which is object. So create new useState and pass object as initial value. Counter to zero and name to empty string. Now define its name by using array destructuring, details and set details. Now delete these two lines, we don't need them. So instead of writing name, write details.name and details.counter. So here in increase counter function, I remove this and guess what should we have to add? Right, we have to add set details function for update that counter value. So I write set details and remember, whatever value you pass inside this function, it will be updated with the original value. So object counter colon details dot counter plus one. Save it and take a look. Yep, it works. But there is a one big problem that we don't have our name element inside this object. Let me show you that. So I simply write here console dot log details and save it. Now refresh the page and see first we have two elements in object. Now when I click on this increase button, the name element is removed from our object. So why does that happen? It happens because we directly pass object without add other old values. So the solution is first we add all other values of that object which is name here and just update that counter element with new value. So in set details function, we can pass another function and that function can return the previous value of our state variable. Don't get confused, just see this. So this previous is same as this details variable. Let me show you that by console it and add some text here. See, we get all values when we click on this button with error because we can't write console inside this function. So remove that and now we use the spread operator by using 3 dot previous. This will add all previous values of that state variable. Now we replace counter with the old value which is previous dot counter plus one. Save the changes and take a look. See it perfectly works with the name element. So whenever you work with an object or array, we have to first add all previous values by using this method and then update whatever we want to update. Let's recap what we learned. So useState is used to create state variables in functional components. So to use useState hook, we need to first import that and use it inside the functional component. Here you can pass any type of data like boolean, number, text, object, array, anything and then store it by using array destructuring. The first variable is its current value and the second one is the function for updating that value. Simple as that. Some people can get a little confused here and I was also confused when I learned use state hook for the first time. But with practice, I learned this concept and use that in my projects. So practice this use state hook and feel free to ask me in the comment section if you have some doubts on this topic. And yeah, other hooks tutorials are on the way. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button and see you in the next video. Have a great day.